In one of my last lessons, I talked about George Benson's secret of the two chord approach. And today I wanna to share with you Pat Martino's approach, which is very similar, what I'm calling his secret of the one chord approach, because Pat Martino makes it even simpler than what I talked about in that last video. A lot of you guys were asking me to do this video, so I wanna to get to that right now. My name is Chase Maddox. I'm a jazz guitarist and educator based here in Miami, Florida, and let's get into it. Pat Martino talks about these concepts in his book called Linear Expressions. I recommend you checking that out. The way we're going to go through this today is a very simple three-step process. The first step is what we call converting to minor. So Pat Martino's whole approach on a general overview is that every chord can be a minor chord. Seems a little strange at first, but I'll show you exactly how we can convert chords from whatever they are, whatever chord quality and type, to a minor chord. I even have a sort of chord conversion cheat sheet in the PDF that you can get in the link in the description. The few examples that Pat Martino gives, just right off the bat so you can kind of see how this works, if the chord is a minor chord, you keep it a minor chord. If the chord is a major seven chord, so let's take the example of C major seven, you can think of that as its relative minor. So major seven, relative minor, in this case, A minor. If the chord is a dominant chord, like a G7, you want to think of that as if it's a two, five, one. So the two chord that would lead into G7 would be D minor seven. So G7 becomes D minor seven. And then the third one we wanna look at right now, just as a basis, is if we have a minor seven flat five or half diminished chord. In this case, we'll do E minor seven flat five. We rearrange those notes and use G as the root, so up a minor third, and we get a G minor six. So a half diminished chord has the same notes as a minor six chord up a minor third. We'll, we'll talk about these exact conversions in a minute, but that is the first step of this process. When you're seeing a chord, you need to be able to quickly convert it to minor, which means you need to be comfortable with these various theory concepts, intervals, relative major and minor, these kind of things, two, five, one, certain progressions. So it's not the most beginner type of approach, but for anyone with some experience, it's a very effective one. Now, the second step here is that we need to have minor lines. So if everything is a minor chord, we need to make sure that our lines fit over this minor type. And so this is what Pat Martino takes most of this book explaining and, and showing is five different chord forms for minor. So he goes through them. We're not gonna go through all of them right now. I'll leave those in the PDF, but I'll give you one as an example. So let's say G minor, G minor seven. We have different chord shapes for this across the guitar neck. And for each of those forms, he calls them forms, we have an activity. And for this shape, this chord shape, the activity sounds like this. So there's a specific line that Pat Martino has in mind that ascends and, and descends for each of these chord shapes to get you the sound of that minor chord. A couple things here where I would just disagree with some of his approach for the majority of students. Pat Martino is clearly a genius. I'm not saying that this is, uh, my method is any better than his, but for the vast majority of students, it's gonna be very challenging for them to apply a five measure line in any sort of way, whether they're processing it um, or trying to implement it or even just understand what's going on there, it's gonna be very difficult. I'm sure for Pat Martino, it's very clear to him once he plays through that, he gets the sound in his ear and he can just go through it. So there's a few different ways that I would go about it, which we'll talk about later. Instead of trying to memorize each of these five different five measure lines, that's a lot for most students. The other thing that's a little bit confusing from his book that I wanna point out is he discusses how you should learn for each of these minor shapes, the relative major scale. So B flat major scale over this G minor shape. Um, one thing that can be confusing there though, is that the B flat major key, B flat major scale has B flats and E flats. But when he goes through these lines, he doesn't play E flat, he's playing E natural. 
applying like a G minor six kind of sound. So certain things like that can be a little bit confusing to any sort of beginner intermediate student trying to apply this and not really sure why they work. So my recommendation for this is to learn some different minor based vocabulary that is a little bit smaller in scale, not a five measure thing that you're going to have trouble applying, but some shorter licks. And so let's look at three examples from Pat Martino right now that demonstrates how he's thinking about these chords as minor and that are a lot simpler to get into your playing. So the first Pat Martino lick we're going to look at is from his song, the great stream over B flat seven. Now, what I said for dominant chords, we would think of them as if it's the two chord associated with it. So F minor. So that's what we should be expecting. So let's hear what he does on this. A few interesting things happening with this piece of vocabulary. The first one is he starts on the major seventh, the A natural over B flat seven. It's really unusual. But if we see it as enclosing, this A flat, it makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so the A flat is the seventh of B flat, fine, but the rest of the notes make it clear that he's not really thinking B flat, he's thinking F minor. We have the C, E flat, and F. Well, those four notes, A flat, C, E flat, F, is just an F minor seven arpeggio. So that's an example that we can start to apply. I would see it over this F minor shape, that piece of vocabulary, so that you can move it around. If you need C minor, D minor, G minor, etc. Let's look at another example. Okay, so this is also from the great stream on B flat seven, but this time he's not playing over F minor but I said we should think about the two chord on B flat seven. So why are we playing a C minor seven arpeggio? Well, a couple things. We want to think of minor chords, minor scales, minor arpeggios in Pat Martino's approach. However, it doesn't mean that we only have one minor seven chord or one minor seven arpeggio we can use. Um, and this lick shows that. So what Pat Martino is doing here is taking another minor seven arpeggio that is within this key. So if we think of B flat seven as the five chord, that means we're in the key of E flat. And so we have a few different minor seven arpeggios, minor seven chords in E flat. F minor is one of them, right? We also have G minor and we also have C minor. So he's using that C minor as part of that sound for B flat seven doing another type of enclosure to the A flat, kind of like what we saw before, and then doing this jump down to C, the same actual jump that we did here. So it's a very similar type of idea. Now for our third example, this one's a little bit more advanced and I wanna make sure you guys really understand the theory here because it'll help you immensely when you're trying to apply this to your own songs that you're working on. So D7 sharp nine, we're going to look at the minor approach for this, but I'll just tell you off the bat that when we have this kind of sharp nine, flat nine or altered sound, we want to use the minor sound from a half step above the root of the chord. So D7 altered, we would use or think E flat minor. If we look at this lick though, he doesn't use E flat minor. He's using F minor very clear F minor triad arpeggio, and then a B flat minor arpeggio. And that B flat minor arpeggio is very weird because we have a D flat, which is the major seventh on a dominant chord. Doesn't seem to make any sense. When we have the major seventh on a dominant chord, it's usually a clear indication that the musician is thinking of a tritone substitution. So instead of thinking D7 altered, Pat Martino is probably thinking A flat 13 here. That's the tritone sub of D. And then let's think about the arpeggios he used in the context of A flat 13. Well, A flat 13 is in the key of D flat. So F minor would be 
the minor seven from the third. And B flat minor would be the relative minor in D flat. So those two minor arpeggios fit perfectly within the key of D flat, which makes sense if you think about it as A flat dominant. That's too much theory for you. Don't worry about that lick. That's just for the more advanced um, viewers that want to really understand how flexible this approach can be beyond just thinking one chord forces us into a specific minor sound. There's a lot of other minor options, even when you just have this simplified approach of everything converts to minor. Let me just say something about that real quick. When we simplify everything down to just one chord and reduce the harmonic detail, we are actually increasing our ability to process the harmony. So as an improviser, simplifying everything down, we lose some of that resolution, right? Some of the detail. Sometimes certain notes uh, maybe miss, but it's better to do that in Pat Martino's approach and then add in a little bit more detail than start off with this vast complexity and try and navigate through that. So we simplify and then we add back in that detail that we need. So I just wanna mention that real quick. Now for the third step, we're going to apply this approach to a few tunes. And I'm gonna use the same exact ones I did before in the George Benson video, Secret of the Two Chords. Um, so you can see how their approaches are very similar, but Pat Martino takes it a little bit further. All right, so let's first look at Take the A Train, kind of simple example. Um, the first four measures, we have C major, and then we go to D7 sharp 11. So for major seven chords, in Benson's approach, we would keep it as that major type. If you haven't uh, checked out that video, go check out that video. Um, but in Pat Martino's approach, we would convert major to its relative minor. So C major becomes A minor. And then when we get to D7, we think of what is the two chord associated with this dominant chord? Well, the two chord that would be with this D7 is also A minor. So this is one example of how Pat Martino's approach makes this very, very simple. For the first whole four measures, we think of A minor. And notice I'm not really specifying what kind of minor. You could use Dorian, you could use minor pentatonic, you could use melodic minor. There's a lot of different minor options available to you, and each of those will give you some differences in the extensions that you'll hear, but they all can work. For example, we might wanna just use A Dorian or A Aeolian over this C major or A minor pentatonic. And maybe when it gets to the D7 sharp 11, we do A melodic minor because that gives us that G sharp for that sharp 11 sound. That is what I'm talking about when I say we add back in some of this detail. We want a simplified approach of I can just kind of hear A minor over all of this and do that. And when I hit that D7 sharp 11, maybe I hit that G sharp to really bring in that sharp 11 sound. But I'm not switching in my mind a whole scale out for another whole scale. I'm not switching out C major for A melodic minor for another whole scale. That's very challenging on us mentally um, and processing what we're hearing. So you don't wanna do that. Moving on, so we have the two five back to C. And because that's a different two five, D minor and G seven, we can think about all of that as just D minor. And when we get back to C, we go back to A minor, easy enough. On the bridge section where we have F major, we think relative minor for that. Well, that's also D minor. Relative minor for F major is D minor. We get to D7, we do that as A minor. And then two five back to C is D minor again. So basically the whole song of Take the A Train, we can simplify into two approaches. There's like an A minor type of section, and then there's a D minor type, depending on what chord we're on. Um, and then from there, Again, we can get specific about certain arpeggios, certain specific extensions we wanna add in, but that's a better foundation than uh, starting at a higher level with a lot of complexity. Now let's take a look at Stella by Starlight. So this is one of the more complex jazz tunes. It's one we looked at again in the Benson video. Now, what we can do here is see how each of these chords can be applied to minor. So it'll give us kind of a good practice of converting things to minor, um, as well as even simplifying further from just chord by chord. 
So let's take this maybe four measures at a time again. So we have a minor two five, E half diminished to A altered, and then we have C minor to F7. For the minor seven flat five, we go up a minor third to G minor. That's the harmony we'll think of and use to improvise. And then, like I said, for an altered chord, we think up a half step. And the reason we go up a half step is because that's the melodic minor scale associated with a dominant, alter dominant chord. So we have B flat melodic minor or B flat minor type. Again, we can keep it very broad as just minor. It would still work if you did minor pentatonic, even though some of the notes are um, not exact to the A7 altered chord, it will still work. And then when we get to the two five, C minor F7, we can think of all of that as just the two, the C minor. Moving on to the next section, we have F minor and B flat seven going to E flat major and then A flat seven. So that two five, that's all just F minor, F minor and B flat seven. E flat major, we convert to C minor as the relative. And then A flat dominant chord, we think of that as the two chord associated, which would be E flat minor. What you notice on a lot of these two fives is when we have the minor chord for the two and we go to the five chord, we just move up a minor third. So when we had that E half diminished to A altered, we did G minor for the E half diminished and then B flat minor for the A altered. Come back to that in a second. Then we have B flat major. So that's gonna be the relative minor, G minor. Going to E minor seven flat five is still G minor. A7 altered, we could do B flat minor here. D minor, it's a minor chord, so we think D minor. Then we have a different 2 5, B flat minor to E flat. Just think about it like the B flat minor, the two chord. Going on to the last four before the bridge, we have F major. The relative minor would be D minor, so we go back to D minor. The same 2 5 again, G minor and B flat minor. And then we have another minor 2 5. So a minor seven flat five, go up a minor third, that's C minor. D seven altered, you go up a minor third from what we did is E flat minor. So for any of these minor two fives, think C minor and then E flat minor. All right, let's take a look at the bridge now. Starts off with this G seven altered, G seven sharp five, up a half step, minor, so A flat minor. Then we go to C minor, keep it C minor. A flat seven, sharp 11, so this Lydian dominant sound. Well, this one's pretty easy. It's the same as if it was just a dominant chord, which just means you can go up a fifth, A flat, go up a fifth to E flat, and play that minor type. So A flat, Lydian dominant, E flat minor. And then we have B flat major, back to G minor. So ending off this tune, we have a series of minor two fives, E half diminished, A7 altered, D half diminished to G7 altered, C half diminished to F7 altered, and then B flat major. So we get some practice on applying this to minor two fives, which I think is one of the most helpful ways of applying Pat Martino's approach. G minor for the E half diminished, B flat minor for the A7 altered, F minor for the D half diminished, A flat minor for the G7 altered, E flat minor for the C half diminished, and G flat minor, F sharp minor for the F7 altered, ending with G minor. One thing I wanna say here, because as you notice, we're switching minor scales constantly on this end section and maybe even before. So you might think that's, that's a lot of minor stuff to kind of keep in mind. First thing is it does get a lot easier once you practice with this concept. You'll make these conversions a lot faster. If this is your first time hearing this concept, it's, it's gonna be a little challenging to wrap your head around and I recommend doing this process with other tunes that you're working on. But I can make it a little bit simpler for you um, with these two fives. And the basic idea is for the minor two fives, say the E minor seven flat five and A seven altered, you could just keep that as whatever minor we used for the two chord, just like we do with regular two fives. So instead of going from G minor to B flat minor, you could just keep this as G minor the whole time. And that would pretty much work. The little bit of an exception there is that we miss out on the C sharp for the A7 altered. 
I like to think about it is it's just still G minor, but I can add in that blues note, that flat five, sharp 11, because that gets me that missing note. Um, but then I can simplify again to just minor two five. I just go up a minor third, think that minor, and then add in a little bit of a blues element. And I don't have to switch between G minor and B flat minor in my head. So hopefully that also helps you in simplifying some of these minor two fives. Again, the PDF for this is linked in the description below. And you can get that with a 14 day free trial of Chase's Guitar Academy. It's a nine page PDF that really lays out everything about this method. Um, really make sure you can get this in your head and applying it to tunes, as well as a chord conversion chart cheat sheet um, that shows you how to convert other chord types that we just didn't get to today to minor, such as augmented, diminished, etc. Hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Comment below if you like this approach. Is this something that you guys use? Um, and let me know what you want to see next on the channel. Thanks, guys.